we'll just get right into it. So my name is Stephen Mwangi Kamau. People right here at Shiloh have some other name, but don't adapt to that. Amen. <laughs> um, I'm a son in this house and I'm privileged. Um, Jesus Christ is my personal savior. And in the words of our pastor, Brian, Ataniyalaoni to me, it is the greatest honor of my life, you know, just to serve God and his people right here at Shiloh Worship Center. And I want to thank God, first of all, for this opportunity and for saving me and the authority of this house, our bishop and mom, Bishop Dr. Jimmy Kimani and Pastor Alice. Come on, let's celebrate them. Let's celebrate our mom and dad. Amen. And also the leadership of the church, Pastor Brian, Reverend Beatrice, um, Pastor Richard, Pastor Washo. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity and may God bless you. Also, let me appreciate Mr. and Mrs. Kamau, who are my parents. Come on, let's celebrate these people. Sima many what to adjure was a ziwangu. Eh. Msinyonange TV, guys. Yes. I know Sami Boy is here in the house. Sami. Maybe. Ah, and only, yeah, let's celebrate my brother over there. Yeah, that's my family. God our Bariki Sana can have your seats. Amen. Iloambia tu manze kujeni. This is not like hosting. Let me tell you, it's not like hosting. Here, I'm not even doing the most. <laughs> I'm allowing God and His Holy Spirit to do it for me and even for all of us. Yeah. All right. Um, today is, I want to say today is day four of harvest, right? Wednesday was day one, Thursday day two, Friday day three. Yesterday we didn't have anything, but today is day four of the Harvest Conference 2023 the restart edition right how many of us have been here since day one day one yes yes to make our wednesday thursday friday regardless of the services that we are coming in and our theme is the restart the restart yeah and so even today if i will give a topic to my sermon or preaching it will be enough mercy for your restart yeah enough mercy for your restart or sufficient mercy for your restart yes sufficient mercy for your restart and i know we've had we've talked about mercy we have had it time and again we've defined it when you truly understand this school in high school in primary we have here in church we have defined it time and again what is mercy and what does mercy um look like and so mercy is the compassionate treatment of those in distress. So there is the word compassionate treatment of those in distress, especially when it is within one's power to punish or harm them. Mercy is the compassionate treatment of those in distress, especially when it is within one's power to punish or harm them. All right. So we're seeing... Mercy is, mercy can only be given by someone who is above you. Mercy cannot be given by someone who has no power over you, right? And so even when we're talking about the mercies of God, I cannot be merciful to God. He can only be merciful to me. You know, he causes me to live. God does not exist because of me. I exist because of him. We exist because of his mercy. Yeah, and just when looking and focusing on God, we think that God has the power and God will have decided to punish us for our sins. We could be on that cross, you know, but instead he was like, okay, because of my nature, because I love these people, because on a day like this, um, today is 20th, yes, on 20th of August, 2023 at Shiloh Worship Center, I want these people to be here. So then what does God do? He gives up his son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross, who took the punishment of our sins. So where's, that is one action that we see God being merciful. That is a proof that God is merciful. And so it simply means forgiveness and withholding punishment because God decided that, you know, I'm going to forgive 
us. You know, God is going to forgive you and I. And so he gives up Jesus Christ. He goes on the cross, dies a very shameful death. For those of us who have been privileged to go for the encounter, we've seen. And even when you think about it, it what we see is not what happens, right? You see, you know, it is because they want to even preserve our sanity because I want to imagine that it is graphic because he was nailed, he was put on the cross naked. Yeah, naked. Jesus was naked on the cross. Being naked is shameful. Some of us are preservative, as in, kuna wengine wetu tuki, awezi tokanje na vest, wezi tokanje na vest, because I, you know, wengine wetu atwezi va, ata short, ata kwa nyum, apo tuka pulotienu, because unataka, you know, it is, when you see someone, we, you want to cover him. But then he laid on the cross naked and just took it all. That is an action that proves that God is merciful. And in the book of Psalm 51, verse 1, book of Psalm 51, verse 1, we see this is David um, after he was confronted by the prophet Nathan about him um, sleeping with Bathsheba and Nathan came to tell him that, you know, you sinned against God, you have blood on your hands and there is a consequence for that. And David says this, have mercy upon me, O God. You see, um, the word O oh, is, it's, it's, it's an emotional word. Oh, see, oh, it's O. Oh. Like David is saying, have mercy upon me, O oh God. He is crying out to God. According to your loving kindness, according to your multitude of your tender mercies. So we are seeing the multitude of his tender mercies. It is sufficient for us. We're saying it is enough for my restart, enough for your restart. So according to the multitude of your tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Like David is saying, forget, please forgive. Just do away with my sins, O oh God. This is what David is saying. And he goes on and on to ask God for forgiveness. And so we're seeing that the first step for us to start this journey of restarting, the first step is to realize where we've gone wrong. Our first step is to realize, wa ni me fumble, manze ni me blanda. I need to go back to God. See, when, when David in the book of, um, yes, First Samuel, so Nathan confronts David, and David just goes to God. He enters into a week of fasting up until the first child, um, the child that he had with Bathsheba, he dies, and then, you know, he even orders to his servants, you know, to prepare a feast for him. And so David, when he realized his flaw, when he realized he mistake, his mistake, he went back to God. David did not put up a pity party for himself, you know, and we tend to do that a lot. Because you feel bad because you realized, oh, manze, zijakwan kikuja church for a month. So, iriacha, wacha tu ni achange tu kukuja because neenda kudu. No, when, when you come to terms with your flow, when you come to terms with your sin, we turn back to God. We go back to him and ask for forgiveness and ask him for a restart. We do not stay there down and just... That is one lie that we get to receive from the enemy. Ah, that, oh, God does, God is not even, you know, Mungu ataki story zako, wosha, wosha dunda, usha anguka manze, God anapenda wa say righteous. See, God wants you. Jesus is interested in the business of your life. Pastor Angeshi said, um, he was saying that Jesus is interested in my business. And even as I was praying, I was saying, Jesus, you are interested in my business. May I be interested in your business? 
you know, may I be interested in your business? Because when I'm interested in his business, then I rise up, I go to him and ask for forgiveness. And so even as much as David's sin had consequences of the child dying, he did not focus on now the consequence. Now the child has died. He did not remain there. He turned back to God. And as much as the child died, he got a restart. He got a restart. When the child died, you know, now he was able to have Solomon. And we all know the story of Solomon. The wisest man to live. He was a great king of Israel. So we turn back to God and we ask for forgiveness and he starts to restart us. See what I did there? Yeah? <laughs> Thank you. And so I pray that when we go astray, we will not remain there. We will not feel pity for ourselves. You won't feel sorry for yourself. When you come to terms with your sin, we turn back to God for him to be able to restore us. And I was hearing, I was listening to um, Joshua Selman, and he was saying that for most of us believers, we think that mercy is for the sinners only, yeah? Because you come to church, let me come for the people who serve, yeah? Sorry, I'm also coming for myself. We think that mercy is for the people who don't do right by God. You think that because I am up here on stage, I do not need the mercy of God. Because you lead prayers in your group, because you're the chairman or the chair lady of your group, you think that your members need mercy and you do not need mercy. He said that you tend to think, unaitajitu revelation, unaitaji rema word, unaitajitu fresh fire, fresh anointing, you know, that powerful thing. But we need the mercy of God. The idea of mercy is for all of us. Psalms 86 verse 5, we'll get to see that. That mercy is for all of us. Psalms 86 verse 5. It says, For you, Lord, are good and ready to forgive. So you're saying the Lord is good, the Lord is ready to forgive. So for those of us who fumbled and God is ready to forgive. And abundant in mercy. Abundant in mercy. Today you'll hear the word mercy up until tucho. Tuchoki. Right? And abundant mercy. I pray at choka. <laughs> and abundant mercy to all those who call upon you. And abundant mercy to all those who call upon you. It is not abundant to the sinners, it is not abundant to those who do not pray. It is not abundant to those who do not fast. It is not abundant to those who haven't accepted Christ. It is abundant to those who call upon the Lord. So you want mercy, you call upon God. It is provided for you if you call upon him. But when I sit down, when I sit back and think to myself that, oh, I am God. I do not need the mercy of God. It will never appear to me. But I want to walk in his mercy. I call upon the Lord. It is not to um, the people who don't just, they look like Christ. Umem judge. Situna judge. Umem judge them. Wa? Unitajitu neema. <laughs> Sio ya uyum situ anakanika anitaji neema. Sia wale wa se our brothers when you wanna stay too busy a jaba. Sima besti witu wenye tunapatana na wao tu kipanda shailo o akitoka pari. Si ule ni bako anakam sa sita ya usiku sa tisa unaskia tu kelele. COM said is for all of us, for those who call upon the Lord. So if I, am, if I am a believer, if I live a righteous life, I still need the mercy of God. We still need the mercy of God. This restart 
is for those who call on God's mercy. It is available for those who call upon God. It is available to all of us. It is available. So it, it, I always want to think that, and this is what the Bible says, because Jesus saves. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And Pastor Kibero always tells this, that when we read the Bible, So whatever, who, whoever means, it means that. It does not mean anything else. I a deeper revelation. Greek word means it is whoever. Whoever believes in him shall not perish. So either you're in a web of darkness, you're struggling with whatever you're struggling the mercy of God is available for you if you only call unto him. So have you moved away from what God has called you to? Just call upon him and his mercy is available for you. Have you gone away from the ways that God has told you? You know, Stephen, I want you to use this lane. But I have shifted from this other lane. Then the mercy of God is available for me when I call unto him. Have you stopped trusting God for whatever reason? Eh? Umeches the bag, bag imechesika, imeenda uko hivyo. Eh? And now you've stopped trusting God. You are trusting God for a job. Uko na iwezi. Ukaingia, wash, 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 or whatever. Eh? Maybe unapiga wasi ingeta. You know, <laughs> okay, atuna wase wanapiga nangeta hapa hivi. Thank God. <laughs> but have you stepped away from what God has called you to do? Have you stopped trusting in him for whatever reason that you have decided that, ah, this has taken so long. This has taken so long that I have now curated my own ways. Just call upon God. Our action point is calling upon God for his mercy. Lamentations 3, verse 22 and 23. Today we're going to read a lot of scriptures. So Lamentations 3, verse 22 and 23. It says, through the Lord's mercy, we are not consumed. I want us to read together this verse. So one, two, three, let's go. Through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed. Because his compassions fail not. Hold up. So it is through. Through. So it is not when Nikisema, I came to Zimmerman through Kamiti Road. Sikupitia Ngomongo, Sikupitia, Nilipitia, Kamiti Road. It is only Nilifika Zimmerman because Nilipitia Kamiti Road. So you're saying, through Lord's mercies, we are not consumed. I am not consumed because I pray a lot. I am not consumed because I serve in church. I am not consumed because my mother is a prayer warrior. I am not consumed because of the mercy of God. That is what is keeping you and I alive today. That is what is keeping your faith steady and firm right now because of the mercy of God. And even you who has not given your life to Christ, you are not consumed because Jesus is merciful today. That is the only reason why. That is the only reason why. See, because you are not kidogo kuliko ule mse mwingine. See, because you are not going to be a good person. You are not na to Ama a good person. You It is just because the mercy of God is upon you just because the mercy of God is upon you and that is the nature of God it is because of his nature of being merciful and compassionate you see if God waited for us to do something right for him to be merciful jiulize j ningekuwa hapa Man, if God, 
hey, if God waited for Stephen to be, to do right, I don't know. I don't know where you will be. But simply because he's merciful, manze wengine wetu tungekuwa tushaishia. Tungekuwa in, I don't know. But he introduces his mercy. God is compassionate. And compassion is just recognizing the suffering of others and then taking an action of help. So you recognize the suffering of others and then take action to help. So God realized these people, if they continue like this, nitawamaliza. So he introduces Jesus Christ. He, he recognizes the suffering of his people. Then he takes an action to help us. He takes an action to help. I'll use my father as an example. Um, yeah. Thank you, Dad. God bless you. Um, so my father does um, mission work. He's a missionary. Um, he runs a program in Turkana. And that what he does in a, is an act of compassion. So he realizes that why, or because again, it is all God. So God puts this burden in his heart of these children in the northern region of Kenya that these kids are hungry and they need something to eat. And so he realizes the suffering and then take action. He takes an action of him going, gathering fans from himself, from friends, from well wishes, and then he goes to help these kids. Compassion. That is what God always does for you and I every single day. Every single day. You know why? Because he realizes that you cannot do it alone, even as a believer. And so every day, he keeps the Holy Spirit inside of you because you are born again. That is compassion. God realizes that if I take the Holy Spirit from you, Caleb, you will fumble like no one's business. You will fumble. And so when, when he... When Jesus Christ is being introduced to the picture, when he dies on the cross, and when he ascends to heaven and says, I will not leave you as orphans. I will send you a helper. That is compassion. Jesus realizes that our was say, eh? Peter tendelea kukata watu kumaskio. You know. <laughs> but the Holy Spirit is introduced that is a sign of compassion. That is an act of compassion from God to us. Because God is touched with the feelings of our infirmities. Because God is fully aware that you are man. He knows Stephen is a human being. He knows Stephen. And as Stephen fix, Stephen will want to lie. So he introduces the Holy Spirit, who reminds me that, bro, lying is a sin. If you want to make it to heaven, you better listen to my voice. You know, he realizes that we are men and women, yeah? Well, when I say man, just human being, you know, we live in a world where. We all want to be identified with, but here at DCIKZ, at Shiloh, we bless the Lord because he has transformed our minds, right? Amen. Amen. You just were saying, Jesus died for every man. Why did you not say Jesus died for every, no, 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 no. Jesus died for every, um, for everyone. And so, coming back to compassion, Jesus is fully aware that we are men. And he's calling us to himself. He provides us his word. That is an act of compassion. He provides us with his Holy Spirit. That is an act of compassion and mercy. And that is all we need to restart. That is all you need. You need the word of God. Nothing else. You do not need my word. You need a restart. Talk to God. Read his word. Pray. Ask him. 
I don't know how you refer to God, but you call unto him, say, man, God, I need a restart for my music, you know? I need a restart. I need a new album, Lord, speak to me, you know? And may God bless you for the good work that you do with your ministry. And so an analogy of just to help us understand, you see, if God, if I am a poor person, and I pray to God, or God just blesses me. And so you see, I had no money, but now I have money. So with money, I have to tithe. I have to give offering. When God puts a burden in my heart for me to help someone, I do that. But because of what, because of my past, Nico, a bit rigid. Staki kutoa Nico, God 10%. Manzeni melipwa to 5K. Unataka ni to... No, just squeeze uki break down evil, imeisha. Situna jua imeisha. Avenue to natozo ile kitu. You know, when, but you see, even, so when I refuse to tithe, God is not like, oh, Stephen, you did not tithe. So I'm coming to judge and punish you right about now. God weighs this scenario. But He does not justify my deed, He does not say it is right. Just okay, just because where, where you think that I am not the provider, I love mercy and I will keep on reminding you that I am the provider. And so, what does God do? God gives us people who speak life into us, God brings a person who will come and preach to you and say that Jesus is the ultimate provider. When you lack, everything belongs to Him. Silver and gold. He is the maker of heaven and earth. So I do not rely on my strength. So when God blesses me, I just give it back to him. He's compassionate. That is the nature of God. And that is who God is. And so, and every time we fall, every single time, what is always in the heart of God is, just come back to me. Just come back to me. Don't go away from me. I am not here to punish you and to make you feel bad. I am here to love you. Yes, we will correct this, what has happened. Nimeiba, nimeshikwa, nimepelekwa kamiti. I will still love you. God will send Again, my father, Pastor Dan, to come with people for prison ministry. New Kweli. Atakuja kuni visit. So that he will speak that word from God about compassion. And oh, okay, yeah, I fumbled. I'm now in prison. Nilikuwa naweka luku. Saini luku inaniweka. Ata, you know. <laughs> eh? And I will just be reminded again of God's love. God will always find us. But it's also upon us to position ourselves for where he will find us. Reverend George on Thursday, is it on Thursday? Yes. He talked about having a right attitude. So yes, you have, you've done what you've done and you've come right here to church the best place to be for God to meet you, for you to receive his word. But if I just stay like that, if I come and nikaikule hivyo kwa ukuta ni seme, ah, ah, nilikuwa nangoja uimbe wimbo za kiswaili leo hawaja imba. Ah, mi tu staingia basi. You will miss it. You will miss him. We have to be intentional also on receiving God's mercy. We have to be intentional with it. Again, Psalms 86 verse 5. We said that, it says, For you, Lord, are good and ready to forgive and abundant in mercy to all those who call upon you. I must call upon God, man. I must call upon him. Pastor Brian cannot call upon him for me. I have to open up my mouth and believe that he died for my sins and when I call unto him, he will give me a way out. He will give me a way out. 
I have to believe it in my heart. I have to believe it for sure. Psalms 145 verse 8 and 9. Psalm 145 verse 8 and 9. So it says, verse 8 says, The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and great in mercy. The Lord is gracious, full of compassion, slow to anger, great in mercy. He's full. Not half. Not for... You see... When you read the Bible, you're reading it for you. So, Sifikiri, I, full of compassion. His compassion is full for everyone. Of, read it for yourself. He's sorting you out. First, leave alone every other person. I think about myself. So, Sifikiri, what? To call how many people in this world, Sijui? Master Titians, how many billion? Kimu? Nilijua tu hapo uneza niyokolea eight? 8.6 or 8.5 billion. Sifikiri, wa? Mass is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That was the water. I'm thinking that God is just full of compassion for me. He's sorting me out. You see, when you think about that, it gives you trust. It builds faith in you. You're not thinking that God is not able to do this for me. This is, hey, this compassion is too big for him. If he's dealing with me, oh, then he, you know, he's able. Verse 9 of Psalms 145 says, The Lord is good to all, and his tender mercies are over all his works. The Lord is good to all. To all. Again, I repeat, all means all. You and I, big, short, small, black, white, whoever, every human being, the Lord is good to all. His tender mercies, it's tender, it's, it embraces you. Aiku, aiku pig you kuma kofi sijui inakumaliza. It's tender. Tender mercies are over all his works. Who created you? God. You're his work. I am his work. So his tender mercies are all over his works. So it is to all of us. It is to all of us. This, for me to begin my restart, it is available for me. It is available for you. And one thing that God is saying, stop thinking of the thing. Stop thinking of the mistake. Stop thinking of the mistake. That will make you stay there. That will not allow you to move on and continue trusting in God. When you concentrate on your sin, then it, it's sio ni mbele iko hapa tu mbele yangu sio niangalia mimi ni mwizi wa niko tu wa mimi ni mwizi mimi ni mwizi i need to move from that and see jesus right i need to move from that and focus on the master and focus on his mercy and call unto him And again, I say, if there is one way that God has proven that he's merciful, is by giving us his son. By giving us his son. So how, because it has been provided for us, so how do I even walk in it? How do I practice it? Yeah? If, if we can look at First Peter, First Peter chapter 1, verse 3. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. It says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to living hope through the resurrection of Christ from the dead who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope so there is a living 
hope. It is living. It is there. It is available. It is everlasting. It does not die. It does not expire. To a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. So how do I get to walk in this living hope? It is what? Through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. It is for me to believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross. It is for me to believe that Jesus is the son of God. Jesus died for my sin. Jesus came for me. And I get to walk in that. I get to walk in that. And this is not rocket science. Romans 10 verse 8. How do we walk in... Now, how do we believe in Jesus Christ? How does this living hope become a reality to me? You know. It says, in fact, it says, the message is very close at hand. It is on your lips and in your heart. And that message is the very message about faith that we preach. Another verse says, it is, for it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God. Believing in your heart that you are made right with God. And it is by confessing with your mouth that you are saved. By believing in your heart, confessing with your mouth that you are saved. Are saved. It is not by me preaching that I am saved. It is not by you leading prayers. It is not by you reading the word of God. Let me tell you, even if you keep on praying and you have never said it with your mouth and believed it in your heart that Jesus Christ is king, it is in vain. Siku ya kiyama ikikam. The song, Maswakitambo. Well, Miswakitambo, but Sema, Siku ya kiyama Itakupata wapi brother, itakupata wapi sister, ya kiyama. You know, when that day of rapture comes, where will you be found? Will you be found doing good works with not believing in Christ? Will you be found boasting in, ah, mi uomba manze, mi wanda pray a mountain, have nothing against that. Mi u pray and fast, ka yesu, dry and fast, shakahola people live and got nothing on me, you know. Them they died. Me bado naishi manze. Unaye kwa tuna neme ya Yesu. If I do that without confessing with my mouth and believing in my heart that Jesus Christ is my Savior, heaven, ata uta iyonea kwenye transjuivi, hauta iyona. Hauta iyona. It will be like, eriata rumors unasikianga hiko. Iyo hauta iyona. For it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God. And it is by confessing with your mouth that you are saved. And in Romans 10, 13, it says, For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Again, everyone, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord, you will be saved. You want an out? Call on his name. Call on his name. Call on his name. You want to be saved? You want to spend eternity with Jesus? Call on his name. Believe in your heart. You see, we live in a world where tunataka tu do life on our own. We want to do, we have everything on our hands. I want to be in charge of everything. I want to be in charge of this, this, this and that. Everything. And with that, because we've, because we have not allowed Jesus to do it for us. We become frustrated. We become depressed. We become stressed. We become everything that you can become when you do not leave things to Christ. We have become all of that. Because we've not allowed Jesus to be our Lord. You cannot experience your restart without him being born again in your heart. You cannot. That will be something else different. You have to open your mouth and call upon Jesus. Hebrews 4.16 says, 
let us come boldly boldly let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious god so gracious god he does not say our i don't know angry god he does not say to our god who punishes to our god who is the great judge he says come boldly to the throne of our gracious god there we will receive his mercy so i must come to him i must come to him he's there arms open wide i have to draw to him i have to come boldly you see that is faith faith is boldness i am believing that i don't know how this works but i choose to believe haina science mathematics formula ya kuelezea but the bible of god, the word of god has told me when i confess with my mouth when i believe in my heart and say that jesus is lord i am mio ingine staki kujua staki nimeachana nayo akiniambia good works hapo mbele nafanya good works akiniambia have fellowship nina have fellowship akiniambia pray i pray but first me i choose to believe I am bold with that word. I I I have confidence in it. Siko siko 50-50 about it. I am confident that what the word of God says is true. I have faith in it. Then it says there we will receive his mercy and we will find grace to help us when we need it most. So it is when we come boldly to him in faith. Sio kiburi. You're not being proud and beating yourself Auna sema sasa utatusa tunsamee basi nsamee You see in boldness there is humility In this boldness it is heavy with humility This boldness does not cause you to come to the level of God it causes you to bow down before him because you recognize his authority says there we will receive his mercy and we will find grace to help us when we need it most when we need it most when we need it most so he said one of the things that god shows us how gracious he is is by giving us his son and when you accept his son you receive the holy spirit and because Jesus does not come and go so you always need him <laughs> always so we are always approaching the throne of grace we are always approaching it si wakati nimefall no 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 we are always approaching it always always we are needing it all the time We always need the mercy of God. For me to be alive I need the mercy of God. I always need the mercy of God. His there we will receive his mercy and we will find grace to help us when we need it most. If this is correct, we need it most every single day of our lives. Because Jesus Hana season The Holy Spirit does not work with he is there for you always sisi ndio tunataka kumtreat hivyo ni kama venye kuna season za futa games so au shughuliki hata na tv time kuna ball you know but time kuna ligi huko ndio una ah, unachukua jezi yako ama if you uko na jezi ya like a national team au ivai is this siku zingine time ya world cup tu ndio unaichukua unafanya ile kitu and that is some of us that is how some of us treat jesus and the word of god niko kwa fix ah ndio uwe yesu we always need him but you see the, <laughs> the good thing with god is that that is not how he treats us god god does not keep me aside on a shelf oh stephen uliaenda awacha hata mimi nikuweke hapa 
nikiona time unanihitaji na mimi tu ndakuja hata mimi nikutwe tu ni kudust hapo kidogo to work z that is not how god treats us his mercy endures forever his mercy endures forever can we go back to lamentations 3 verse 22 and i want us to look at verse um now the both of them lamentations 3 22 and 23 so ah let's go back to 22 through the lord's mercies we are not consumed because his compassions fail not they do not fail haina downtime see on network ya safaricom hai ha kiwi always working haina downtime hii sio kama for those of us who shop at power star hakuna time wanaitisha am password come unlock this so that we serve you you need the mercies of god they are there for you they fail not they don't fail man they do not 23 they are new every morning not some morning not up until you reach 30 years they are new every morning so you wake up oh i am alive the masses of god are new even today bishop told us the masses of yesterday are still that is why it's telling us they are new every morning because even if i went through the same thing yesterday Today it's the same thing but I need a new mercy from God. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. New, ni mpya, ni mbichi. Si mtumba. Haiko thrifted. <laughs> They are new every morning like no one has used it before. They are there for you every morning every day of my life the mercies of god are new and so we've talked about a lot why we need this restart why we need the mercies of god and i want just to submit to all of us that we have to be intentional with it I have to take it upon myself that God I need you to restart me. And you know sometimes we even don't know where we need to be restarted but God unveils these things to us. He unveils it to us. At all. Ape nyenye inahitaji his mercy because I called unto him. Because I said Jesus open the eyes of my heart I want to see you. You see when you see Jesus then he because he is light kunoto to darkness kwa roho yako he lumi wow kumbe nimekuwa niki gossip oops you know maybe we'll go and say my two i me i me i'm a good person but because Jesus is light he illuminates the things that he wants us to correct in our lives. And I just invite us to be on our feet as we just interact with Jesus. As we just call unto him and ask him, Lord, restart me. Where do you want to restart me, Lord? Jesus, what do you want me to do today? Lord where have I gone wrong and I don't know God I I need your mercy but I feel like I don't need it so show me why I need it You see you cannot you cannot rely on my mercy we cannot rely on the mercy of pastor Brian and the grace upon his life that is for him and his work and his ministry and his family and everything that pertains to pastor Brian you need 
to experience the mercy of God for yourself. See, in the book of Psalms 51, if I can quickly go there, it says, David says that, you know, Lord, as you correct me, may I also teach men your ways. It says, restore to me the joy of your salvation and make me willing to obey. That is Psalms 51, verse 13. Verse 12 and 13. It says, restore to me the joy of your salvation and make me willing to obey you. Then I will teach your ways to rebels and they will return to you. So you're also doing this for, you're not doing it for yourself. And as God is transforming you, you will teach other people. Because you were taught. Someone, somewhere, crusade, in Amatatu, YouTube, TikTok, on the pulpit, on the streets, you just had them talk about Jesus and the Holy Spirit was able to convict you. And so even as God is restarting you, it is not for you alone. It is for you, for your generation, for your family, because it needs you. So just call upon him. Father, open our eyes today. Open my eyes, Jesus. We need your mercy today. We need a restart from you, Jesus. We need a restart today. Tell him I need a restart. Just open your mouth and tell him, Lord, I need a restart today. Jesus, I need a restart today. Because your mercy endures forever. Because your mercy endures you every morning. I need a restart today, Jesus. Lord, where I have gone astray, I need a restart. Where I failed you, Jesus, I need a restart. Where I stepped away from your calling, I need a restart. I need a restart, Jesus. Show me what I need to restart. Lord, show me where you need me. Show me what you need me to correct. Show me what you need me to correct. Some of the things we are doing, we think they are okay, but they are not. Some of the things we do, we think they are in line with the word of God, but they are not. But we need the light of Jesus so that we may see, so that we will see where we have gone wrong. Jesus, open my eyes. I need you today. I need you today. Open my eyes. Hey, I need you today. The mercies of the Lord are here. The presence of the living God is here. Open your mouth and call unto Him. The mercy of God is for them who call upon Him. The mercy of God he is abundant for those who call upon him. For those who call upon you, Jesus. For those who call upon you, Lord. Hey! For those who call upon you, Jesus. Hey! Your mercies are abundant. Hey! Your compassion is full for me. Your compassion is full for me. Your compassion is full for me. Are you there and... You see, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. And sometimes you need to hear yourself saying it. Because Jesus is born in our hearts. Jesus comes to us. 
when we confess with our mouth when we believe you cannot experience a restart without jesus that is the plain truth my brothers my sisters with the experience restart that's it it's that simple this is not to scare us but it's to realize that we need jesus it is to help us realize that we ought to have him as our lord and savior isio ya kutustua wa say na kufanya tu tujue naitaji god naitaji yesu so are you there you've never accepted jesus in your life in short ujokoka see the mercy of god is available for you you can walk in it it's even available right now because you are alive and you have the chance for you to accept him that is a sign that he is merciful so you there you can raise your hand you can make your way here to the front and just someone will get to pray with you and pray for you are you there you're saying that jesus and yet today i need you today i'm deciding to give my life to you jesus leo nataka kuokoka i want to walk this life with you are you there and at the end of this service you can see any of our leaders any of our ushers but also is that what is making your heart to be heavy what is making your heart to be heavy there is mercy for that there is compassion for that what is making you not to live in the fullness of Jesus Christ what is making you not to experience his glory say it to him say it to him say it to him say it to him his mercy he is ready to restart you he is ready to restart your heart he is ready to transform your mind he is ready he is ready he is only looking for a willing heart he is looking for a willing heart Jesus we say thank you goodness and mercy and the power of the blood oh it's his goodness and mercy and the power of his blood it's his goodness and mercy and the power it's his mercy that is sustaining you It is mercy that is keeping you and I alive. It is mercy that he is able to allow us to listen to his voice. It is goodness and mercy. The power of his blood. Jesus, we say thank you for speaking to us today. Thank you for ministering to each and every one of us. And Lord, we pray that as we continue to live our lives as young people that we will always see your mercy upon our lives help us to never forget what you did on the cross jesus help me to never forget what you have done jesus you were good and your mercy is in your forever thank you for what you're doing in this place thank you for what you're doing in the young lives right here at Shiloh worship center And so we lift up your name today saying that you alone is all the praise. Come on celebrate the name of Jesus. Come on celebrate